here we are, Ann. How do you like it? It's like being on a pirate ship. Oh, pirates were pikers compared to the waiters on this job. <laughs> Shall we go below and surrender? Uh-huh. Come on. I don't care. I want to drink. Me too. Me too. Hey, Phil, boy. What about a couple of whiskey, huh? My God, now. Give me a horse's neck. No ten scissors if you don't mind. Bombing job I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> to you, my favorite weakness. <laughs> That's a pretty dress, Anne. You like it? You bet. It was made by the leading dressmaker in Dayton. Ohio? Uh huh. That's where I went to business college. You know, Dad says you're the best secretary he ever had. Never said it to me. <laughs> it's against his religion. You might ask for a raise. <laughs> Have another. Ah, oh, coming too fast for me. Oh, you're out of practice. Uh, good evening, Mr. Deverall. Good evening. Everything is ready, sir. Oh, fine. Follow Captain Kidd and hope for the best. Oh. Here you are, sir. Waiter will be right in, sir. Thank you. <laughs> well, this is more home-like, what? Home was never like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we compromise and call it cozy. Well, come right in. Yes, sir. What's ready? Ready? Oysters? Oysters. Blow your brains out, and if you still live, you become a waiter. Yes. Two clover clubs and Russian caviar. Ooh, Russian caviar? From Hoboken. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Broil squab du jour, cour de pommier mornay. Pommier, pommier. Mutton head. A mutton head, yes. Sir. Well, don't write that. And a quart of champagne. Ooh, you know, I have to go to work in the morning. That means get a move on. Yes. Your favorite roses. I ordered them yesterday. Oh, how lovely. Do you know, this is the most exciting evening in my whole life. That makes me very happy. Cocktail. Here. No, I don't think I'll put it. Nonsense. There's nothing in them but a bit of grenadine. And gin. First cousin to a raspberry. Yes. Won't hurt you a bit. Hurry the caviar. Yes. Here 
Here's to a life on the ocean deep. What ho in a bottle of rum. <laughs> hey, Phil. Yeah? Anchor chain's cut. She's drifting. Give her the word. Okay. <laughs> Too bad, suckers, when you're having such a good time. Just got the signal. Who can it go? Who let go of it? Hurry up, hurry up. Get off that line. Now hurry up, perfect. Oh, boy. What price poopy. <laughs> Not at all, Ann. I mean it. You're always easy to look at. But tonight, you're lovelier than ever. And I just can't keep my eyes from taking liberties. Flatterer? No, no. A girl as charming as you are should have everything. Diamonds and rubies and furs. But I don't want diamonds and rubies and furs. But you do want to see life, lights and music. Someone who cares, and I do. And I want you to be nice to me. Won't you? Caviar. I'll put it down. Yes, sir. <laughs> and get out. Yes, sir. Rotten waiter. Yes, sir. My favorite music. Let's stay. Nonsense. Be a good girl and sit down. But perhaps we don't agree on what makes a good girl. <laughs> Why, can't a good girl have a good time? Oh, you thought you were about to be insulted. Come on, confess now, didn't you? Oh, scared to death. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. Come on, sit down. But I really shouldn't blame you. I'm the son of your employer, and that in itself makes me a low, low scoundrel. Well, if I didn't trust you, I wouldn't be here. So here we are. Chopped onion? Mm hmm. I'm going to make life a little brighter for you, and you're going to make it a whole lot brighter for me, Nespa. Come right in. Yes. I'll serve the supper. Open the wine. Ooh, yes. Sir. None for me. <laughs> I suppose an Ohio champagne is included in the seven deadly sins. Yes. Run along, nuisance. I'll ring when I want you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. No, really. Oh, Anne. You have the loveliest neck. Speaking of necks, how about a bit of squab? Thanks, but it's getting late and I have a headache. Oh, I have the cure. Please, no. Oh, come on. If you don't mind, I think I'll go home. But I do mind. You've no right to act like this. You've no right to keep me here against my will. Oh. We'll talk about that after supper. Will you please open that door? Oh, no. Waiter! Now that won't do you any good. They're used to that sort of thing out here. Open this door. Not yet. Oh, we're dropping the friendship. Mm-hmm. And let's drop the innocence, too. Why not be sensible? I'm not a bad sort. If you don't open that door, I'll tell your father. Tell father what? That late at night you went to a drinking boat but didn't know what you were doing? <laughs> 
tell Papa and he'll fire you. He can't fire me. Do you think I could stand another day in that office with you? Be nice. And you won't have to. You won't gain anything by keeping me here. Oh, I like you in a temper. I want to hold you close, knowing you don't want to be no. held. ship's being raided, that's all. We'll pay our fines and nobody will be any the wiser. We're only witnesses, you see. For heaven's sakes, mum's the word. Come on, snap out of it now, will you? Fix your hair. Now, all right, just a minute, just a minute. Stop crying, will you? Stop crying. All right, all right, all right. Well, come in. What's the idea of breaking in on us at supper? Supper? Yes, you'll find it on the table. Don't almost frighten the lady to death. All right, all right. What's your name and address? John Smith, 435 Fifth Avenue. Who is this woman? Mrs. John Smith. Huh? We understood the ship was outside the 12 mile limit. She was, until they made the mistake of hiring a policeman for a pilot. She's been drifting inside for the past half hour. Oh, and what are we charged with? Nothing. Not even the supper. We're just taking you for a little ride. Come on, beat it. Come on. What's that? Someone took your picture. What for? For the newspapers. What do you think? One, get over there. What will your father do? Sir, wait a minute, old boy. You can't do that. It's John. A hundred dollars for that negative. So, paid. Say, officer, I'm a big man in this town. Time to judge. A big man. Listen, Cap, what are we going to do? The parade has started. Fall in. Come on. We'll be here all night. Beat it. Get out of here. Get out of here. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. get those burrs off you if you keep squirming around. Package for you, Mr. Reagan. What? Oh, thank you. On her lips, there's a wave of laughing. 
And the snow that rolled in our hair On a St. Patrick's morning Hey, big boy, what's going on here? What's that? Now, don't be so inquisitive. Ooh, for me? Now, can you imagine a man in his right senses buying that for a kid sister? I know someone who'd buy me loads of jewels. <laughs> you better grab him before he comes to his senses. When I'm married and gone far away, you'll be sorry. Married? You? Well, you're not serious. Mm -hmm. I should say I would be sorry. I wouldn't know how to get along without you. You know, you were nothing but a little hop of a thumb when I began taking care of you. You're not much bigger than that now. I like that. Don't think your big brother stopped loving you just because he's married. You know, you're not half bad. Poor brother. Where's Anne? Darling up for you as usual. You think she'll like it? Like it? Oh, dear, to be loved, to be smothered in diamonds and rubies and birds. Jealous? Me? I should say not. Come here. Up. Now, which hand do you take? Yes, again. Larry. Now, close your eyes. Yeah, I've only got one neck, you know. Are you going to give it to her now? What ho, Mrs. Regan! Yes, sir, Mr. Regan. At your service, sir. Come here. Yes, sir. And, dear, will you never realize that you're my wife and no longer my secretary? Silly, that's my telephone pad. And I'm a reasonable man, but I draw the line at part of it. You left one in my pocket. Well, I couldn't have. Would you kindly take it out? My sweetheart, on our first anniversary. Oh, Larry, it's gorgeous, and you remember it. I love you. I'm just beginning to realize the goodness there is in life. You darling. Did you remember? <laughs> Don't you see? I'm all dressed for the big celebration. Oh, Larry. I love you, sir. Hey, big boy. When you get through with that Gilbert Garbo, there's a telegram on the table I forgot to give you. All right, Smarty. Helen, come here, dear. Look, isn't it exquisite? Oh, lovely. But see what he gave me. Oh, Beautiful. Isn't Larry a darling? Oh, love him, love him. Oh, I'm so happy. You're not the only happy one. Oh, not really. Tell me. I'm not saying anything yet. Oh, come on. Who's the lucky boy? Boy? Say, no baby Romeo for little Helen. My man's a man, and so romantic. Silly. Look, Larry, dear. What's the matter, tired? Oh, no, I'm all right. Looks a bit dissipated to me. Fresh. He must be low to let me get away with that. Sure something hasn't gone wrong. Well, I heard some gossip at the club today. This wireless confirms it. Gossip? 
And it's not to be discussed before children. Then it must be good. Why? What is it, dear? Well, it concerns my best friend. Oh, Colonel Dixon? His wife and some rotter. No. It's been going on while the Colonel was in Europe. And this proves he's heard the gossip himself. It means trouble. Maybe not, dear. After you've dressed and had dinner, you'll feel better. For Miss Helen. For me? Oh, come in. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so glad to see you. Just motoring by and couldn't pass without stopping in. If you had... Wait, Larry, this is my brother, Mr. Regan. Delighted, Mr. Regan. Mr. Devereaux. Not uh, Frank Devereaux. Yes, indeed. The one and only. How do you do? How do you do? And my brother's wife. Why, Anne. Hello. I say this is a surprise. Oh, you know Anne already. Yes, rather. I once had the honor of meeting Mrs. Regan. At sea. Thank you. It was so long ago, I'd quite forgotten. Well, it's awfully nice to see you again, Anne. Uh, brother, we're just starting to dress for dinner. Oh, I only stopped in for a moment. Don't let me detain you, Mr. Regan. Then I shan't see you again. You're going to stay for dinner. Sorry, Helen, I can't. I say you shall. I order the cocktail. Obey! Well, well, well. Congratulations, Mrs. Regan. I always knew you were the home type. You keep away from Helen Regan. Does he know about us? Our little adventure? No, and I don't intend he shall. <laughs> Fine, then there's nothing to worry about. Meaning what? That mum's the word for both of us. You be considerate of me, and I'll do the same for you. I don't care about myself, but my husband adores his sister. And there's nothing I won't do to keep you from making either of them unhappy. Oh, really? I had no idea you'd married. <laughs> you know, I haven't heard of you since that night we jumped our bail. Oh, you... <laughs> Everything okay? Cook says welcome, and you're going to stay. No, really, I can't, Helen. I'm leaving for Honolulu in the morning. Oh, no. Yes, I must. I'm all fagged out, doing nothing. And boats are one of my passions. Awfully nice to have seen you again, Mrs. Regan. Best wishes always. Oh, but I think it's horrid of you running away the very first time you come to the house. Darling, I must talk to you for a minute. Come here, dear. Darling, I came all the way out here today to ask you to have dinner at my apartment tonight. Oh, I'd love to. That would be thrilling. Oh, fine. But Larry would be terribly angry if he found out. Oh, but he can't find out. There's a side entrance to the car. You can sneak in there and no one will ever see you. You know, if you really loved me, you'd come to Honolulu with me in the morning. Do what? Oh, we'd be married. Oh, the thrill of it. The romance of knowing we belong to each other. Darling, you love and trust me, don't you? Yes. Then fetch a few things and be there at eight. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Anne. What can I do for you? Please leave at once. Why, Anne, what's the matter with you? Instantly, or I'll call my husband. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. I'll go. You'll do nothing of the kind. 
Let her call him. I want Larry to know I love you. Why have a row? Tomorrow morning I'll be gone. And you promise not to see Helen again? No. Why should he promise you anything? After all, this is my affair, and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. But why have a row, darling? There's nothing to be gained by that. You understand? Yes. Well, now that that's settled, Mrs. Regan, I'll toddle along. So long. Goodbye, Mrs. Regan. So long, Helen. Oh, boy, Ash. I'm awfully sorry, Helen, but... I should think you would be. No, dear, you don't understand. What don't I understand? That Mr. Devereaux is... I won't let you say one word against Frank. Not a... She thinks I've been rude to Mr. Devereaux. Can it be done? I'm sorry, Anne. I lost my temper. Why did you meet this Devereaux, anyway? At the golf club. Well, he's off your list. I don't want to see or hear any more of him. Very well, you shan't, for me. Don't be too severe with Helen. She's still a child. I didn't mean to be. I love her too much to hurt her. But my little sister could be interested in that blackguard. Don't you see? Devereaux was the man who broke up Dixon's home. There, there. You won't have to see any more of it. But, Anne, what made Helen think you were rude to Deborah? I asked him to leave the house. But when Devereaux first came here, you were uncomfortable. I was surprised. No, it, it was more than surprise. Did he ever make love to you? Well, Larry, oh. I couldn't bear to have anyone share memories with you. No one does. He said he met you on a boat. Well, yes, Larry, but... But what? Well, you don't realize it, but you're behaving like a suspicious boy. I want to know how well you knew Deborah, and whether he's taking advantage of it. That's what I want to know. Oh, don't look so fierce. You make me feel as though I was somewhat to blame for something, and that you were on the verge of saying, Woman, I never forgive. No. Woman, I never would forgive. <laughs> Hello? I want to talk to Mr. Regan. Colonel Dixon speaking. Very important. Colonel Dixon. Thanks. Hello, old man. Listen, Larry. I need you. Need every ounce of your friendship. I can't explain over the phone, but it touches the honor of my home. I understand. I have to come back, Larry, to settle accounts. Oh, no, you mustn't do that. You've got to keep your head. The instant I find him, I'll... No, no, please, don't do anything until I get there. I can be in town in an hour. For my sake, old man, don't do anything until I get there. Please, don't. What are you going to do? Kill Devil. Oh, Larry, keep out of that. Keep out of my friend's troubles. He never kept out of mine. Oh, but if you... You said I suspected you. I don't, dear. I believe in you as I believe in God. Goodbye, dear. Don't worry. Oh, be careful, my love. Be careful.
That you, Helen, dear? It's Bates, madam. Miss Helen went out a while ago. Out? Yes, through the side door. She was carrying her overnight bag, madam. And she drove away in a roadster. Oh, no. Yes, madam. Oh, Helen. My car, quickly, please. Yes, sir. Ferguson. Yes, sir. Bring me a thumbtack. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, what time is the lady arriving, sir? At eight, but women are always punctually a half hour late. <laughs> uh, shall we put away the photographs, sir? That's a good idea, Fergie. She's a newcomer, a fresh flower, so to speak. Mm, I see. Uh, Ferguson. Did you get our steamship ticket? Uh, yes, sir. And you spread the news that we're leaving for Honolulu in the morning? Yes, sir. Good, because we're not. We're sailing for Havana. Good heavens. Exactly. Pardon, but uh, what have you been up to now, Mr. Frank? Well, my wife may accompany us on the boat. Oh, Mr. Frank. Mr. Frank. <laughs> Are we packing this instrument, sir? I'll take care of that, Fergie. Uh, may I have the evening paper? Oh, surely. Oh, Mr. Frank. Mr. Frank, Colonel Dixon is back. Yes, I read the good news. Uh, hadn't we better start for Havana tonight, sir? Mm, discreet, Fergie, discreet. We could board the boat at midnight. Oh, let us board it now, sir. <laughs> there, there. Don't get so excited. For... Answer it. Hello? A lady to see Mr. Devereaux. A lady to see you, sir. Ooh. Have her come right up. Hello? Tell the lady come up. He says to go right up to 402. What are you dreaming about, Fergie? I was thinking of you, sir. You'd be such a nice man if there weren't any ladies in the world. But it wouldn't be such a nice world. No, but it would be safer. <laughs> There, there, you run along to your room. We'll pack later. And Ferguson, yes, this sign goes for you, too. Always, sir. Come in. I haven't seen her since this afternoon. She's here. Absurd. Make yourself right at home, won't you? Thank you. Don't you think this is just a little imprudent? Why? You're a married woman. I didn't know you were so scrupulous. Hmm. Always when there's a jealous husband hanging around. You know you're expecting Helen. 
If she isn't here already. Look for yourself. Now that door leads to my bedroom. It's been much admired. Helen. Operator. 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 Don't forget the dining room and kitchen upstairs. And remember to look up the chimney. Why does my being here upset you so? I'm not upset. I only have a lot of things to do. And I still think your husband would be extremely pleased if he found you here. You should have thought of that when you made love to his sister. When I saw that child in your arms. She's old enough to know what she's doing. Mr. Regan mightn't agree with you. Still, Mr. Regan might not object to me as a brother-in-law. Mary, you? Uh-huh. I've reformed, too. Tell me where Helen is or I'll call my husband. Oh, look here. I'm sick of hearing about Regan. I insist that you leave now. Wait a minute. What are you going to do? Call my husband. Fine, fine. Then we can tell him that 18 months ago you were arrested in a private cabin with me during a raid on a disreputable ship, huh? He wouldn't believe it. Oh, but the camera doesn't lie. The camera? Yes. Do you remember a flashlight was taken that night? Yes. It's a particularly good photograph. You and I, remember? Now that's what a photographer calls a print. Your husband might call it a proof. I have another in my safe. Also the negative. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure you'll excuse me. I'm not going. No? Not without Helen. Goodbye, Mrs. Regan. I won't leave this room. Wait a minute. Hello? Mr. Lawrence Regan to see Mr. Devereaux. Well, tell him Mr. Devereaux's out and won't be back till after midnight. Mr. Devereaux won't be back until midnight. Sorry. Yes, so am I. See if there's any message. No message? Yes, you might tell him that I'll be at the Western Club until... No, uh, never mind. Thank you. No message. Now, listen, that was your husband. You're going to get out of here and get out fast. You're just trying to frighten me away. I'm telling you the truth. He may suspect I'm not out and come up here. Why should he? How do I know? But I know you're going and going fast. No, I can't. Who's there? Reagan. Just a minute. I'm dressing. You shouldn't have said that. That's all right. I'll get rid of him. You were told I wasn't in. I knew you were lying. But I wasn't in to you. So I thought. That's why I went out and came back to side entrance. Well? I've just left Colonel Dixon. He's looking for you. Well, well. I told him you'd left town. Thanks. 
You've just about time to get out before he discovers I lied. And why should I get out? Because he's going to kill you. <laughs> oh, not really. However, as it happens, I am leaving for Honolulu in the morning. And I'm going to see that you do. And why are you so anxious to save my life? Only to save my friend from a nasty mess. Suppose you try minding your own business. I'm going to make this my business. Oh, come to see me off, huh? Exactly. And you're not coming back. Hmm. Splendid, splendid. And we can leave at once. No. Not just yet. No? Why not? Because I'm not going to let you walk out of this mess with flying colors. What do you mean? Just this. I'm going to give you a licking that you'll never forget. No, you're not, Regan. We'll see. Not here. Wherever you like and whenever you like, but not here. It's going to be right here and now. Listen, old boy, I'm not going to be spanked by you. I'm leaving this room now, and you're leaving with me. Put down that gun. Then you'll go? Not until I've taught you that you can't run amok in other men's homes and get away with it, including my own. You seem to forget that your sister invited me to your home. Because she didn't know what a rat you are. Evidently, Mrs. Regan doesn't agree with you. Well, what do you mean? Only that she doesn't dislike me. She ordered you out of my house? Do you know why she did it? Why? She was afraid you might find out she was once my... <laughs> well, very, very... Don't let go of
Hello. Oh, what? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Get away from me! I'll kill you, you! Hello? Oh, Mr. Callahan! Oh, Mr. Callahan! Yes, what is it? This is a murder! A murder? murder. Where? Let me go! Help! Hello? What is it? I'm in 402! What is it? Oh, he's shooting her! Who's oh, shooting who? Touch nothing till he gets Oh, here. I need to go to. I need to go to. Hey. Oh, four, oh, four. Out of the way. Out of the way. Get back. Hello. What, Cal? What's the trouble? What's happened here? A plenty. Huh? Double suicide. Yeah? yeah. See? Oh. Well, she ain't dead yet. Well, what the... Uh. Hey, easy with that gun. Where are you shot, lady? I'm not. Huh? Well, why, you must be. I shot him. Sure, you shot him and then shot yourself. He attacked me. Yeah, she does look pretty well pawed over. Oh. Stop that. The way your dress is now is evidence, and it's going to stay evidence until the captain sees it. He locked the door, tore my dress, I called for help, I had to kill him. You ain't come to yet. Sit down here, take it easy now. Come sit down. It's got to be suicide, Conway. Yeah. I, I, I can fix this thing all right. Yeah. Get away from there. Now, listen, you go on over there and sit down till the captain gets here. <laughs> yeah. Well, the captain will take care of it when he gets here. Mr. Attorney's on his way. Very well, sir. The Carlton apartment, 64th near Madison. Hey, leave your dress alone till the district attorney gets here. Costigan. Yes, sir. Where are the missing pieces of this photograph? I haven't been able to find them. Find them. They're very important. Okay. That's my photograph. Who does this gun belong to? It's Mr. Devereaux's, sir. Where did he usually keep it? In the table drawer. But tonight, I saw him put it in that cigarette box. Why? Uh, I don't know, sir. Get that sign off the door. Hey, you say that door was locked from the inside? Yes. Well, what became of the key? They ain't found it, Chet. But two of your men are covering the ground below. Say, listen, Cap. I want to tell you this. Shut up. You know anything about this sign? That was Mr. Devereaux's custom when he was in conference with a lady. We're ready for her now. Riley, bring the woman down. Right. Listen, Cap, 
I tell you, it's a plain case of double suicide. Yes? This room looking like a cyclone has struck it? Well, some people die hard even when they want to die. Yes, yeah, so will you. Now, shut up. Get out of here. Go on. What's your name? I won't say. Oh, yes, you will. Who is she? Oh, I never saw her before, sir. I've seen her before. In some lineup. Oh, you never. Yeah. May I go to Mr. Frank now, sir? Yes, get out. Ask you what's the matter when these sensors come up here. Curious. What's wrong? Get that telephone girl up here. Bring her up. Yes, sir. I'm up. Spotted for suicide. Oh. Come here. Poor Mr. Devereaux. He certainly was a nice man. All the women was crazy about him. He tried to intrigue me once. <laughs> Shut up. To think somebody croaked him. Answer my question. Well, you ain't asked me none. Ever see her before? Uh, sure. She came up to the desk a little after eight and asked for Mr. Devereaux. She wouldn't give her name. She said she was a lady. <laughs> you certainly are a wreck now. What did he do to you, dearie? Did anybody else come up here to see Mr. Devereaux tonight? Well, a man asked for him while she was there. He said his name was, uh, was, uh, oh, I can't think what it was. Come on, think fast, think fast. Wait a minute, Hawkshaw. The name was uh, Regan, Lawrence Regan. Did Mr. Regan come up here? Uh, no, Mr. Devereaux gave him the runaround. <laughs> he started to leave a message to say that he was at the, uh, at the Western Club. But he changed his mind and he went away. Could he have come up here without your seeing him? Well, not by the desk. But that don't mean nothing. There's a side entrance. That's why so many bachelors live here. <laughs> Get Lawrence Regan here. Try the Western Club. Anybody else come up here to see Devereaux tonight? No. Nothing happened until about 9 o'clock when the shooting come over the wire. For a minute, I thought I had Chicago on long distance. <laughs> That's all. Well, did I know enough to get my picture in the paper? Beat it. On your way now. Keep your trap closed about everything in this room. All right, Flatfoot. Mrs. Lawrence Regan. Is this your card? Is that your name? Answer me. Why did you shoot Devereaux? He attacked me. You can see how we struggled. I got the phone and he took it away. He tore my dress. The phone was knocked to the floor. I got the pistol and I shot him. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Why not call it double suicide? For the good of society. For the good of your hotel, you mean? This is the second rumpus here in a month. Well, what do you expect me to do? Make it loving, unpopular? Put that fellow up. Go on, get out of here. Go on. But say, listen, Go Mr. On. This is Go on. Go on. You too, Murphy. Now, don't get rough. On your no, way. No, Mrs. Easy. Regan, come, rest yourself. You must be all fagged up. Come, straighten that chair. Sit down. Sit down and take it easy. That's all, boys. Now, let us just go over this from the beginning, Mrs. Regan. There are one or two little points I'd like to have cleared up. But I've told you. I know, I know. Now, don't get me wrong, Mrs. Regan. I want to help you. Just talk to me as if I were your friend. Of course, always remembering that I'm an official and that any statement you make may be used against you. You're very kind. Now, 
Shall we start from the beginning? How well acquainted were you with Devon? Oh, I'd met him some months before my marriage to Mr. Regan. He'd been to our home once since then. Was Devereaux expecting you tonight? No. Then why did you come? You must tell me the truth, Mrs. Regan. It's the only way I can help you. To... to protect another woman. I see. Who was the woman? I won't involve her in this scandal. Was she a friend? A relative? How did you know that she needed protection? I learned she had an appointment here, and I knew of Mr. Devereaux's reputation. So you came here to protect her? Yes. And of course you told your husband you were coming here. He left home early. I didn't know then. So you left word with the servant? No, I didn't. Really, Mrs. Regan? Some people might think that you were trying pretty hard to cover up your tracks. Was your husband jealous of Deborah? No, that's absurd. My husband loves and trusts me. But that didn't stop you from coming here. No, I had to. And you arrived a few minutes after eight? Yes. And were admitted immediately by Devil? Yes. Then what happened? He began making love to me at once. Why didn't you go? He locked the door. Didn't you try to stop him? Oh, I stood staring, horrified. Well, you know the rest. There was a struggle. I got the phone and he pulled it out of my hand. The receiver was off. I ran over there and he followed, caught hold of my dress and... I shot him. Simple as pie. She came here in perfect confidence. Right, Mrs. Regan? Yes. She was so innocent that she didn't even see this sign on the door. Please do not disturb. Oh, I didn't see it. It was right before her eyes, but she didn't see it. That sign wasn't on the door. Where was it? I don't know. Did Deborah put it there while you were here? Certainly not. You didn't after you shot him? No, no. And yet when help arrived in answer to your call, that sign was on the door. How do you explain that, Mrs. Regan? I don't explain it. Nor the fact that old devil who started making love to you at once, locked the door and tipped over the phone. It was three quarters of an hour before anyone heard your cry for help. How do you explain that, Mrs. Regan? I'm not in a state to explain or keep accurate account of time. You stood staring horrified while Deborah locked the door. Yes. What did you do with the key? I don't know. You were too excited to notice? I guess so. I see. And finally, you shot him twice. Yes, yes. Why weren't three shots heard over the switchboard? I didn't fire three. No? Oh, I must have fired three times. Exactly. Two in the wall and one in Devereaux's chest. Yes, that explains it. Did I understand you to say that the telephone was knocked off the table before you shot him? Yes. And it fell exactly that way? Yes. With the receiver off. In that way, the switchboard girl could have heard the shots? Yes, that's right. You're lying, Mrs. Regan. The hooks jammed against the table leg exactly as though the receiver were on. That way, the switchboard girl couldn't have heard a thing. But she did hear. You come clean. Well, we'll wrap a third degree around you that'll curl your hair. I won't say anymore. I won't. I won't. Now, you come on. Tell me the truth. Come on. No, come, on you long enough. come on, tell us. No. Mr. Lawrence Regan. Get her out of here. I'll say you're a good shot, lady. Mr. Regan, I'm District Attorney White. How do you do, Mr. White? Did Costigan tell you? Only that you wanted to see me? Your friend Devereaux has been murdered. Murdered? You called on him this evening. Yes, shortly before nine. But he wasn't in. Had you any reason for disliking Devereaux? Oh, of course not. You weren't jealous of him? Jealous? Why? Because of your wife? My wife? Certainly not. Well, you... No, no, don't get excited, Mr. Regan. That's exactly the answer I expected. Well, why such a question? To eliminate you. I don't get you. Try. Right. 
It's all right, Mr. Reed. It's quite all right. We've got the person who shot Devereaux. What? Yes. Locked right in the room with the victim. The doctor says Devereaux may regain consciousness. Devereaux is not dead? Oh, no. What are you doing here? She declares she shot Devereaux. Oh, that's a lie. You made her confess to something she didn't do. But, Ann, what are you doing here? Oh, Larry, I can't tell you. You must tell me. Don't you understand your being here under the circumstances involves your good name? Why are you here? To protect another woman. Who? There's no other. There is, there is, but I can't tell you. Who. You must tell me. Uh, she's hiding something in her dress. I'm not. Then why did your hand go there so quickly? Because my dress is torn. She's been trying to ditch something for the last half hour. I haven't. Get a matron and have a search. No, wait. Anne, if you're hiding something that involves your being here, give it to me. Oh, Larry. Give it to me. That's what we wanted. The other pieces of that picture. Bring them in here. The viceroy flash. She, Devereaux, and two officers. What were you doing in that raid? Answer. I've got it. That flashlight was taken the night we raided the rum boat. She was pinched with Devereaux on a disorderly charge. They jumped the bail. Oh. Ah, now we're getting at the real motive. And what were you doing there? Oh, Larry. I worked for Frank Devereaux's father. Frank Devereaux had been very nice to me. He invited me out to the boat. He said it was all right. I believed him. Once we were there, he began making love to me. I begged him. I fought him off. And then the police arrived. But why did you never tell me? Oh, I wanted to a hundred times, but I was so ashamed. You came here to get that damaging photograph. And to get it, you shot Devereaux, didn't you? No, no, I didn't even know he had the photograph. But Devereaux wasn't lying when he said that you were... You no, no, Larry, listen to no, me. No, I listen today. Oh, Larry, I didn't do anything wrong, and somehow I'll find a way to make you believe me. I believe her, as far as the ship's concerned. Well, he's making you believe that story, is she? Mm -hmm. I was a plant on that ship getting evidence. I was the rotten waiter that served her and Devereaux in the private cabin. I saw right off the reel she wasn't falling for his rough stuff. Oh, thank you. That's unimportant as evidence. Back to your nightstick. Yes, sir. Madam, you're under arrest. Wait, please. Mrs. Regan didn't shoot Devereaux. I shot him. Oh, you just happened to remember it, eh? I never dreamed that you'd accuse my wife. Devereaux had wronged my best friend. I came here to get him out of town. We quarreled. The tragedy occurred. Let Mrs. Regan go. I'll make you a complete statement. It's too thin, Regan. You're not the first man who's tried to wish himself into the electric chair to save a woman. Take her to the station. Take her out. Don't touch her. Easy, will you? Wait, dear. Wait. We're going. Quiet. Hello? A lady to see Mr. Devereaux. Keep your mouth shut and send her up. He says to go right up to 402. 402. Maybe the other woman. Clear that car. Okay. Oh, Larry, no, don't let them. She mustn't come up here. Silence. If this woman came here by appointment, if she's the one you came here to protect, 
It may save your life. He's right, dear. No, what happens to me doesn't matter. For the next few minutes, everything depends upon your silence. The woman on the way to this room must not suspect what's happened. Regan, I hold you responsible for your wife. If anyone speaks... Riley, put out those wall lights. Out of sight, Evan. Get in that corner. Shh, quiet. Come in. Apartment. Yes. Won't you come in, miss, please? I'm Mr. Devereaux's valet. You had an appointment with him? Yes. But I was delayed. I had an accident. I ran into another car and they took us both to the police station. Otherwise, you would have been here? Yes. Well, I'm sorry, miss. Mr. Devereaux is not here. I'd like to leave a message for him. Certainly. Tell him that Miss, tell him Helen Regan called and that she's changed her mind. Lights. Oh! Larry! There, there, dear. Larry, what's this? What's happened? Now, now, it's all right, baby. Nobody's going to hurt you. Oh, Larry. I've been such a fool. I'm so ashamed. I was going to run away with Frank. I'm sure Anne overheard us. That's why we quarreled this afternoon. Anne didn't want you to see Deborah anymore? She begged me not to see him again. Mr. Deborah was now conscious, but he only had a few minutes to live. All right, into that room now, every one of you. Come on. It's Frank. Line up. This is Regan there. There, Mr. Frank, that's fine. You're feeling better. Well, well, well. Quite a party. Oh, Frank. Helen, you're a little bit late. Mr. Deborah, which one of them shot you? But Mrs. Regan, wasn't it? <laughs> I admit we quarreled. And she has admitted shooting. Tell them the truth, Deborah. We all know she's guilty. <laughs> That's funny, because she isn't. Uh, tell them, Deborah. Tell them I did. No. Yes, but it was an accident. We had an argument. I lost my temper and drew a gun. In the scuffle, it went off. <laughs> I got what was coming to me, that's all. You swear this is true, Deborah? Absolutely. Well, Regan, you've had a very narrow escape. And I wish you the same luck, Mr. Devil. I guess that's all. Well, Ann, I... I guess I won't bother you again. Good luck. <laughs> Fergie. I feel a little bit tired. Put the sign on the door, will you? And remember, old timer, it goes for you, too. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Frank, you, 